What's up guys, so sorry I'm late to covering this cover. Haha, <laughs> no. Terrible jokes aside, if you watched the Tararu podcast, you know that my laptop needed repairing, which is why I didn't get around to making this video sooner. But now it's all fixed, and here I am, finally. So, recently the cover of Genesis Testament 5 was released, in addition to the synopsis and then the summary. The volume itself releases on the 10th of December, but I just want to talk about my thoughts on what we know so far and give some predictions for the volume itself. I'd also like to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Also, I shouldn't have to say this since it's pretty obvious, but I'll be talking about spoilers from the latest light novel volume of Index, so if you hate spoilers, you're definitely watching the wrong video. Anyway, let's begin. I want to discuss the cover first, and then I will read the summary released for the volume, and drop my thoughts and predictions. I think this volume cover came as quite a surprise for those of us who are caught up with Genesis Testament, so it kind of makes me think, how confused are the fans who aren't caught up when they see this? This cover is clearly based off the famous children's novels written by Lewis Carroll, known as Alice in Wonderland, or Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, which is perhaps one of the most famous stories of all time. But why is the volume cover, or perhaps even the volume itself, if we are to judge Genesis Testament 5 by its cover, based off Alice in Wonderland of all possible things? Was Kamachi smoking double the amount of crack than his normal fix? Maybe. But jokes aside, a character called Alice was first referenced by Anna Sprengel and the newly introduced character Arcadia. So, it appears that Alice will play an important role in this volume. This is further supported by the synopsis and summary. But let's look back at what was stated about Alice in Genesis Testament 4. Quote, I don't really care, but does this wild new age mean anything to us? Why not ask Alice? I'm sure she's as bored as ever. Everything she says is downright indecipherable. It makes me dizzy, and I feel like my brains are spilling out my ears. Listening to her absurdities is like getting lost in the woods. She really needs to control her dopamine or endorphins better. Well, it is Wonderland. You can tell she's the real deal when she was faced with that psychedelic nonsense and still went along with a game of croquet and a trial without questioning any of it, responded the Witch of the Moon and Light with an exasperated shrug, end quote. So apparently, she isn't just the namesake of Alice, as she stated as the real deal, and has actually experienced Wonderland. But this kind of makes me wonder. Yes, that's another pun. In the Index Universe, was Alice and Wonderland written based off this character? Or did a character from the seemingly fictional book come to life? That kind of gives me Inkheart vibes, if you've ever seen that movie or read the books. It is confirmed that the books exist in Index with the next passage, quote, It goes without saying that Alice was the name of the protagonist in a world-famous children's story, but was it as well known that D. Crowley suggested that a familiar story as a must-read for those wishing to deepen their understanding of magic? That eccentric had listed it right along the Goetia and the Golden Boar, and he said it took a completely new meaning when read by someone with sufficient knowledge of Kabbalah. This passage makes me even more curious about the topic, as surely the books cannot be grimoires, as they have been enjoyed by the public masses, despite the fact they do contain magical knowledge if you have an existing level of expertise. As grimoires that contain magical knowledge are toxic if you read them without using a method to decipher them. Therefore, maybe the books do not contain forbidden knowledge, so it was not necessary to turn them into grimoires. As it's stated in Index, that you can use almost any object to use magic. It doesn't have to be directly from a grimoire. But let me know what you think about this. Now, on to analysing the different features of the cover. 
The focus character is of course Alice, wearing that famous light blue Victorian style dress that is associated with the character. But interestingly, she appears to have some kind of animal ears. I guess the volume will explain why she has these, as this was never a feature of the original classic Alice from the books we actually know instead of this weird uh, Japanese light novel. Uh, we see some references to the Alice in Wonderland novels with a white rabbit who Alice follows into Wonderland at the very beginning of the story. Although this rabbit is not depicted wearing a waistcoat and a pocket watch and just appears to be a normal rabbit with red eyes. The other reference is the flamingo with hedgehogs as Alice plays croquet against the Queen of Hearts using a flamingo as a mallet and hedgehogs as balls. Furthermore, playing cards can also be seen scattered with a select few visible. The Ace of Hearts, the Queen of Hearts, the Seven of Hearts, and the Three of Hearts. Obviously, this is another reference to where Alice encounters the human playing cards, who are different numbers in the heart set. But others think that the Ace and Queen is a reference to Misaka, the Ace of Tokiwadai, and Shokuho, the Queen of Tokiwadai. While it is unclear what the seven and three could suggest if these cards all represent a character. The seven could be Sogita, sure, but seeing him appear in the index is nearly as rare as Aureolus returning. Which ain't gonna happen. But the playing cards aren't the only things believed by some on the internet to represent characters. If we go back to the animals, the albino rabbit with red eyes could represent Accelerator while the hedgehogs could represent Toma with his spiky hair. And the flamingo, I guess, would be... Hamazara? Yeah, that doesn't add up. Also, don't know what the pumpkins are supposed to represent, but if you have some sort of idea, then comment below. Now, let's talk about the summary, which gives us a much clearer view about the direction and plot of this volume. Quote, Who is that? She's Alice. She likes her teacher. Winter break. The year is coming to an end in Academy City. One morning, Kamijo Tomo wakes up to find a mysterious girl named Alice sharing his blanket. But this isn't the time to get flustered. Remaining members of the dark side, cleaned up in Operation Handcuffs, cause a train crash and the villainous prisoners inside are let loose upon the city. The battle gets fierce and fear spreads as the dark side is made public. Kamijo and friends reach out to help, and unbeknownst to them, they help the extremely villainous Hanatsuyu Yoen. Something's different about this dark side, who Kamijo has fought before. The friendly Kamijo Toma and the mysterious Alice face off against the ultimate darkness. A new story begins. End quote. Wow. There is so much to discuss here. This summary honestly intrigues me and makes me super hyped for the volume. This volume seems to be directly continuing from the plot of Genesis Testament 3, with the aftermath of Operation Handcuffs, the liquidation of the dark side of Academy City, and the remaining survivors. So hopefully we should learn to find out what happened to Hermazara as he was shot in a cliffhanger at the end of Genesis Testament 3. Also, what is surprising about this volume is that Toma will be the main character in a seemingly dark side centered arc, as it's usually Accelerator or Hamazara who take the lead in these types of volumes, while Toma is usually nowhere in sight. I feel like Toma is pretty oblivious to what the dark side of the city actually is, so I'm curious to see how he will react when cooperating with Yoan, one of the murder twins in Genesis Testament 3. Unless Yoan begins a redemption arc, I doubt her and Toma will get on very well, considering how Yoan has a complete lack of empathy for others, unlike Toma. And since Yoan's sister, Ka'ai, was incapacitated in Genesis Testament 3, she would likely want revenge in this volume. But I imagine the dark side prisoners on the train will just want to try and survive no matter what the cost, so maybe Toma will be more than willing to help them if he just sees them as the victims rather than just criminals. 
Plus, we learnt from Genesis Assessment 3 that there are members of the dark side, known as beneficials, who commit harmless crimes or commit crimes to protect others and can often be good people, and the opposite of harmfuls who have no remorse and commit crimes and harm others to benefit themselves. The dark side is stated to have been made public. I gather this means it's public to the world, as I believe the inhabitants of Academy City have at least some knowledge of the dark side, even if they haven't encountered it themselves or know the finer details. This comes after the revelation of the sisters being made public in Genesis Testament 4, and magic becoming normalized across the world at the start of Genesis Testament. And yet people will say the status quo of Index never changes. I think the consequences of this are potentially huge as other nations could start to question Academy City's role as a world superpower and may want to aim to take some of that power for themselves. Accelerator will also likely be questioned about the Dark Side 2, considering his role in it and his decision to launch op Operation Handcuffs, which could be perceived as yet another mass murder, giving Accelerator an additional charge of that after his verdict of the crime of killing the sisters. So I also imagine we will learn what sentence Accelerator shall receive in this volume. And I also predicted that Toma and Accelerator will clash again. I believe that Toma will want answers for what the fuck is happening in Academy City and that the two will likely fight as a result. Overall, it seems like Anna's plan of stirring chaos in the world is working pretty well. I, like many readers, would like to know what her end goal is, so I hope we find out sooner rather than later. Also, I don't know what the ultimate darkness refers to at the end, perhaps Accelerator, Anna or Alistair, or something new entirely. We will have to wait and see. Also, I'll be curious to see what role Alistair will play in this volume, if he appears again. I can imagine him and Noken trying to do something behind the scenes in Academy City while this is all going on. Also we should note that Alice is seemingly working with Anna Sprengel, and likely Terma has no idea whatsoever about this, so it's quite likely that Alice is going to betray Terma later on, after pretending to be someone who needs saving or an ally. Why is she doing this is unknown at this stage, but we will have to wait and see for answers. So let me know what you think of the summary and cover. Are you excited for this volume? Let me know down below and subscribe if you are new to the channel for more Genesis Testament and general Index and Railgun updates. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.